any fish that is voracious and eats other species of fish will eat something that looks like a minnow. Baitfish, minnows, call them what you will, are eaten by any predatory species and trout are that, like it or not, very predatory. There are a number of different materials that you can use. It's not exactly one you have to use, but they have to have the properties of, of mobility and translucence. First of all, we're going to tie in a tail filament, and we don't need too much to do that. We just need something that gives a little more extension to the body of the fly. And so I'm just going to separate that like that and assess your distance. It, what I mean by that is from the tying in point, how far does that extend past the bend of the hook? And you want to be somewhere around about one third there. But how I use my fingers is very important. You know, a lot of times I don't use these two fingers to hold materials, I use these two because it's easier to see square what you're doing, whereas that you can't because your thumb covers up things and you can't see and you've got to try and hold it back like that's not natural where our body was. So I'm going to set that there and leave that. Now we're going to form a little underbody. Once again, you can make that underbody with silver or pearl or you can mix the two together. It's, it's entirely up to you. And so what I do with that is I just take three or four strands of silver tinsel. If you don't do it right, what will happen is you take the material over or try to catch it in you actually push it over the top of the hook and you flare it and I tell you the quickest easiest simplest way to do it which also eliminates excessive thread wraps is to take that material hold it left side of the thread like that bring it back up over the top of the thread and put it underneath it's going to hold the material and don't matter what it is you're going to hold it to the left side of your thread you're going to push it against your thread, then you're going to bring it back over the far side of the hook and just bring it back underneath and slide it back in. So I didn't take any excess turns of thread. Majority of people now, when they proceed to wind this, will do it by this way. They're going to go up here and they're going to try working between the thread and the hook. What I'm going to do is this. Watch, very simple. I'm going to take the material I'm going to take my bobbin and I'm going to let it rest on my little finger like that and that will control as I move forward the same relative distance of the material to the thread as I move to the right and so by doing this you can see how far away I can easily work from the, the fly body without being interrupted by thread. Next trick to secure it. I know what most people would do They've dropped this and they'll take this over and they'll start picking this up like that, okay? Unnecessary. What we're going to do is this. We've brought the material to the thread. But all we're going to do is transfer it over and under and back round. And by doing that, you essentially have locked it with the thread. You see that? One, two, three. And you're done. And it's a very neat way to do it. And you eliminate excess wraps of thread. Now we're going to build an underbody above and below. What I want to do is to actually build this in two ways. What I mean by that is I'm going to build the upper and I'm going to build the lower at the same time. And the way to do that is make sure that you have the material that is equal in length. So when it's tied in it forms back the body of the fly. Okay. All right. So you selected a bunch of material. You don't want too much, but you don't want not enough. You still want to keep a nice fairly slim translucent profile to the fly body. So we just very gently just kind of tease this out. Roughly speaking the same length as the tail of the fly. Bring this back over and make sure that you've got that more or less exactly the 
the same length, okay? And then separate this 50 50. 50% 50 one side, 50% the other. So you make like like a butterfly wing, like that. Okay? Yep. Alright, we're going to take down this near side, alright? And let me show you how to do it. Keep your thread under tension. Take this down, bring it back underneath, like that, and take your thread over the top. Got that? Yep. And you're going to do exactly the same to the reverse side and lock it. Now, if you bring the fly hook out of the vise and bring the materials back, you can now see how I produced that profile to the fly body. And now we're going to add our flash, which is going to be above and below. Once again, about four, five, six strands. <laughs> show you a really neat way to uh, incorporate tinsel into a fly body uh, regardless of whether I'm doing it for this fly you can do it for any other fly that you want because you can get this in different colors be it silver be it pearl okay so what you're going to do is you're just going to lay your, your flat braid down like this and you get, get the point of your scissors and start at the end and gradually just start to tease that out like that separate those fibers and the reason I do it this way, and you'll understand why in a, in a moment, is this. Is that you can keep everything concentrated together. What I mean by that is you're still retaining the actual braid itself where it's braided together. But now, if we have the fibers separated like that, all we've got to do is hold those over the top of the fly, like that. And you see where the braid is? together, take that, set that down, obviously you want two hackles that are identical, you're going to put one on top of the other, like that, and what we're then going to do is offer them up to the side of the fly to make sure we know exactly the correct name, so from the tying in point you want those hackles to extend the entire length of the body okay so I know that's a tiny end point don't strip those fibers off you know one thing you learn if you ever get to tie Atlantic classic salmon flies is how to prep material before you tie it in particularly for cheeks and so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut that free like that and we're going to very very carefully just trim off those fibers close to the stem and by doing that that flatness makes it a lot easier to set that figure excuse me that feather where you want it to go and it'll stay there so we're going to set one on there first once you've got them exactly where you want them to be then take hold of them, don't move them, now start to crank some tension on your thread and bring your thread forward like that. And what you'll do is of course you'll crimp down the stems of the hackle. So essentially you've tied your fly now and there's only what I call the finishing parts to do. So we're going to finish off and build the head. We're going to use these uh, fish gold living eyes uh, for the I, I like the coloration of those very very carefully just going to pick up a small amount of this and you're going to very very carefully just dump that where you want it to be on the fly we're going to pick up our eye and I use a pair of tweezers to do it and very gently just set that there where you want it to be And then you're going to re reverse the fly, make sure you've got that where you want it.
that stuff doesn't set set off instantly. I, I can still, if necessary, just gently move that around so I get my eyes positioned equally. Not that I think it matters to the trap, because I don't think they can see both eyes at the same time anyway. But any event nowadays of course we've got all these UV products out there and you can do this something the other with it and don't take two seconds to set it off which certainly has got some advantages so any event uh, what you're going to do is you're going to get some of that you're going to hold back the body of your fly like this and very gently just coat that over the head don't go too far back because if you do you'll you'll damage the movement of the fly all you want is just roughly speaking over the eyes back there like that just just enough and that adds a little more security to your eyes anyway and anyway just stop that and that's essentially how you produce that uh, shad bait fish manner and of course you've got lots of different options there how you can go about tying those they, they make little shoals and you can include more material in or less material you know it, it's, it's kind of like up to you how you make those little plans and the most important thing more than anything else which I emphasized to you at the beginning and we just have to put it up here to the light little is the, the translucency in that body see that mm -hmm.